much, everybody, and good morning. Thank you for allowing me to join you today for a visit. I do like this being interactive, so get good questions ready. I want to do some Q&A at the end of my uh, brief remarks. Uh, I'm here because I'm working for you. And I want you to know that I'm working for you. I want to be a great partner and a great ally and advocate for you. You're dealing in your counties with the same issues I'm dealing with. You need a reasonable tax burden. You need value for your taxpayers. You need a strong competitive economy. You need great schools. Um, you, you need a government that's working for the people. You're dealing on your, at your county level with the exact same issues I'm dealing with statewide. And I am working for every resident, every voter in your counties. 100%. Whether, you're, whether they voted for me or not, I'm working for everybody. And I'm working for you. If you're succeeding, I'm succeeding. If you're succeeding, the Illinois uh, future is bright. And that's what I'm here to talk about our partnership together. I want to be with you a lot in the, in the coming months, in the coming years. I want to meet with you a lot. I want to visit with you a lot. I want to get your feedback and your advice and recommendations. Uh, we're not going to agree 100% on everything. I don't know any human, two human beings agree 100% on everything. We don't need to agree 100%. And as Reagan said, you know, when you agree, agree even 80%, you know, you're, 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 and as Americans, we're gonna, we pretty much are gonna agree on about 80%. Let me ask a question, because I know there's a balance of Democrats and Republicans in the room and as county chairman. How, can you raise your hand? How many are Republicans here? Just so I can get a sense. Okay, so that's pretty heavy. How many are Democrats? It's pretty strong too. Okay, so, um, I'm working, I'm not one of these uh, guys who, you know, th thinks that we got into this because one party messed up. We got into this mess on a bipartisan basis. Republicans have been uh, complicit in a lot of shenanigans that have gone on in this state. Not every governor who's gone to jail was a Democrat. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, not, and not every elected official who's gone to jail was a Democrat either. And I'm not one of these guys who blames the Democrats for all the problems. We got into this on a bipartisan basis. We got to get out of it on a bipartisan basis. I'm mad that a lot of the government unions and trial lawyers have bought a lot of my Democrat friends. I'm just as mad that a lot of business interests and road pavers and others, you know, who you know, give campaign cash and then get favorable contracts to the Republicans. Both parties have been complicit in conflicts of interest with the voters and taxpayers of our state. And we've got to stop the conflicts of interest. We've got to get the voters empowered, the taxpayers empowered, and we need the government working for the people again, not the special interests. That's the bottom line. Illinois has had a long history of special deals, cronyism, conflicts of interest, and the taxpayers and the residents of this state have paid a brutally high price as a result. And we've got to fix that, we've got to turn around. And we need to do it on a bipartisan basis. You're here because you're leaders, you believe in good government, I'm with you, I want good government for you. And the core issue that I want to accomplish is to empower your voters, the people in your counties, to control their own destiny, to control their own future. I don't want Springfield telling you how you got to run your counties. You should, you and your residents should decide how you run your counties. Springfield should stop putting all these unfunded mandates on you. If Springfield wants to put a new regulation or force you to do something, they should pay for it. And if they ain't paying for it, they shouldn't be telling you what to do. That's it. <laughs> Same thing in the schools. You should control what goes on in your school. Springfield shouldn't tell you what your school curriculum ought to be. They shouldn't be telling you what you got to test and not test. They shouldn't be forcing you whether. You should run your schools how you want to run your schools. There's, I believe in local control. Local control and voters empowered to control their own governments. The, pe the people of Illinois own the government. The government works for the people of Illinois. It works for the voters and the taxpayers. We've lost our way in Illinois. The special interest groups that make their money from the government run the government for their own benefit. And this is a bipartisan issue. This is not a Democrat or Republican issue. The groups that make their money from the government, the trial lawyers, the government unions, some of these special companies that make money from the government, they're running the government. They control the political process in Illinois and they run the government for their own benefit, not for the benefit of your residents, not the, for the benefit of your taxpayers. And that's what we gotta end. And we've got to stop it on a bipartisan basis and get the power back to your folks. Whether your voters are Democrats or Republicans, it doesn't matter. They're Americans. We're Americans first, and we work for every resident in the state of Illinois. And I'm working for everybody here, fundamentally. I'm a governor for everybody. I'm not just a Republican governor. I'm a governor. And they don't, I told them, stop calling me excellency and stop calling me honorable and all that baloney. You know, this is not a kingdom. I'm a, I'm a public servant. 
I'm not taking a salary or a pension because I'm doing it. I'm not running for some other office. I'm doing this because I love Illinois. I want it working for you and your residents. That's all I care about. And I want a result. I don't want to talk a lot and then declare victory on some minor piece of thing and then you know get nothing really done. And let me tell you a critical issue. Everybody says, Bruce, stop talking about unions and start talking about the budget. Okay? If everybody says, hey, just balance the budget and don't talk about other stuff. Let me tell you something. Balancing the budget is not hard. That is not hard. If you're willing, if you're committed to having a balanced budget, which you guys have to be, you don't really have a choice. In, in, in Illinois, we haven't had a balanced budget since I don't know when. And it's been bipartisan failure. The Republicans are the ones who kicked the can down the road to the pensions and put in the pension ramp. That's a fact. People can yell at me all they want. That's a fact. And, and the Democrats have been spending us into oblivion for the last 12 years, spending money we don't have. That's a fact. And we got to stop this, ladies and gentlemen. We, we can't. We're not the federal government. We don't print money in Illinois. I bet you somebody would like to try, but, you know, they go to jail for trying that. We, we can't print money in Illinois. We've got to live within our means. We've got to live within our means. And instilling discipline is hard. People are cranky at me, but we're going to instill discipline. We're always going to have a balanced budget. But if all we do is balance the budget, and we don't take on the structural reason that our budget always gets out of balance, the next time we elect a Blagojevich, and we have a history of electing Blagojeviches in this state, the next time we elect a Blagojevich, the blitz is going to get blown off the budget again. I'm not going to let that happen. We should not let that happen. We should take on the structure of the government so it's run for the benefit of the people, and we don't have the conflicts of interest that is forcing the spending to get out of control. And I'm personally committed, we've got to make a choice in Illinois. Do we want a big government bureaucracy, or do we want good social services, good support, and do we want a booming economy where the tax burden is reasonable so we can compete and our small business owners can grow, and our, and our homeowners aren't forced out of their homes because they can't afford the real estate taxes. we got to choose. Do we want money in the social services and a strong economy, or do we want a massive government bureaucracy? I choose, I choose government services, support for our veterans, our developmentally disabled, our low-income children, our elderly folks living in poverty. I want to help them. I, t I choose, and I choose a strong economy that's pro-growth, and I want the money out of the government bureaucracy. I want the money out of your government bureaucracy. I want it out of the state government bureaucracy. We can t if we work together, we can get it done. The groups in the government who like the current deal, they're going to fight us hard, and they got a lot of money. They got your money. They got a lot of money. It's your money. And we got to take it away from them and put it where it belongs. Because this government should belong to the people of the state. They should belong to your residents, not to the special interest groups. That's what I'm committed 100% to doing with you. Now, that we've passed out to you. Hopefully, you've seen it. You've got a five-page agenda there, or, or a little handout. I, I, I'd ask you to read it. Please read it. You don't have to read it right now, necessarily. But read it. It'll take you 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Read it and understand. The first page is the one I want you to concentrate on. The first page is the this year agenda. It's this year, it's now. It's not two years from now, it's not three years from now. It's right now, immediately right now. And we're gonna get it into bill form, we're gonna get into legislative form in the next couple of weeks. It's gonna be a handful of bills in the General Assembly. It's good. We're doing it right now. Um, the, 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 the pages two and three are a longer term overall agenda that we hope to do over a few year period. And then I, there's some background articles in there, and then there's two quotes that I'd like you to read and think about. They're quotes from Democrats, two of the most powerful Democrats in American history. Mike Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, a big progressive Democrat. There's a, I took excerpts from his speech, his last speech as mayor. He was mayor of New York City for 12 years. You read his speech, think about what he's saying. If you take the words New York City, out of his speech and put in the words state of Illinois, you understand our problem. If you take the words New York City out of his speech and you put in the words city of Chicago, you understand our problem. And let me tell you, Chicago is sliding towards bankruptcy. Chicago is lost. The Chicago machine, which you guys have all read about, you know about, the Chicago machine is a government union machine and it's dying of its own weight and it's going bankrupt. That's a fact. They're in big, big trouble. But the other quote I'd like you to read is from Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt, those of you who are Democrats in this room, I imagine many of you are probably, you know, would be, he's one of the most iconic, greatest presidents in American history, certainly one of the most powerful, influential Democratic leaders in American history. 
Nobody in this room is going to wonder whether De uh, Franklin Roosevelt was a Democrat. And I don't think anybody in this room would challenge whether Franklin Roosevelt was, is very, very strong union Democrat. Very strong, very pro-union. Very pro-union. More than Obama, more than most uh, any president that I know of. Read what he says about government unions. Read what he says about government unions and think about it. Think about it. And then look at what the federal government does to handle their government unions. Read it. It's laid out right there. And that was those policies on government unions were put in by Democrats, a Democratic Congress, a Democratic president, starting with Franklin Roosevelt and going all the way through Jimmy Carter, Democratic president, and a Democratic Congress. Those policies were put in by Democrats, not Republicans. And those, those uh, Karen Lewis and some of my, uh, my, my opponents over the years, Karen Lewis was the uh, uh, former president, or I guess maybe she still is president of the Teachers Union in Chicago. She says Rauner is a radical right-wing extremist, Scott Walker on steroids, or whatever the heck she says, baloney. Uh, the policies I'm recommending for the state are not radical. They're common sense centrist policies. Centrist policies that, that, that Democrats have put into the federal government and that 29 states have already put in. 29 states don't allow fair share, forced union dues paying, unfair share I call it, in their, in their government. 29 states, this is not a radical idea. This is what most states do, and this is what the federal government does. Because in government, there's no, uh, there's no there there on the other side. There's no pushback. And if the, if the unions can bribe the politicians to get them to deal, the taxpayers are just lost. And you can look around the country. Look at New Jersey. It's one I, 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 I talk about a lot. But you can look at Connecticut, Massachusetts, California. The states with huge debt, huge deficits, huge unfunded pensions. It's the states where the government unions are really powerful. That's what it is. And when, when folks say, well, Bruce, to, to fix the problems with Illinois, what you got to do is just do a graduated income tax. Just raise the income tax, make wealthy people pay more. That'll fix it. That ain't going to fix it. And look at New Jersey. New Jersey's like us. New Jer and people say I criticize Chris Christie. I don't criticize him at all. He's doing what he can do. He's trying his hardest. He's trying to change it. Yeah, I mean, he's doing what he can do. It isn't Chris Christie's issue. It's the structure and the government union power in New Jersey. Look at New Jersey. New Jersey has a brutally high sales tax, just like us. They have the highest property taxes in America, just like us. It's the reason that we, we in New Jersey are where people leave the most from. We lost more people last year out of Illinois than any state in America. But New Jersey put in a graduated income tax, a progressive, high graduated income tax. It didn't fix anything other than a lot of successful people leave the state. And they're not, they can't afford to pay their pensions. They're not paying their pensions now. And they got the highest taxes in America. Taxes alone don't fix the problem. You gotta take on the structure. And people say, Bruce, you're just anti-union. This you're just blaming the unions for everything. I'm not anti-union. We're gonna talk about unions for a second. There's a lot of baloney out there, a lot of misinformation. My grandfather was a strong union guy. I believe in unions. I got no problem with unions and collective bargaining. Here's the here's the and let's look at history. In American history, unions have done good things for American economy. Equal pay for equal work, workplace health, workplace safety, uh, non-discrimination. Unions have done good things in America. The good thing for America is the union agenda is in the law now. It's the law on workplace health and safety. It's the law on non-discrimination. It's the law. What's not the law is pay level and work rules. That's what it's boiled down to now. It's pay level and work rules. That gets set in, the, in a competitive economy. That stuff gets set in a competitive economy. Anybody who's not you know, competitive on that stuff, you're lost. I mean, it's just, it, it, you gotta compete on that stuff. And that's the reason, people, uh, some, uh, some, somebody in the press the other day said, Robert said uh, you know, he wants to eliminate unions in Illinois. Poor baloney. We're gonna be a strong union state for many, many, many years, and I'm fine with that. This spin against me is baloney, and I wanna call it out. Baloney, call it what it is. What I pointed out to some folks is in the private sector, Unionization has been falling for decades. In the private sector, it was 35% of the workforce, 35%. It's now like 6 point something, 6.4% or something. It's gradually going away because the need is gone. It's in the law now. And now it's about competitiveness on pay. And that's just, that gets set by the competitive economy. That's where it gets set. And, but in the government, it's different. You know, we have the most unionized government in America. You know, we have 93% unionization. 93% state government, more than any state in America. How do we get there? Blagojevich and Quinn. 
But why would you put card check in, which I think should be illegal? There should not be card. That's that's un-American to not have a private ballot. Well, go ahead, but you put card check unionizing into the government. The, the unions came into the department and said, I've got friends and asked me. They said they came in, they came and said, sign the card. You don't sign this card. We know where your wife works and where your kids are going to school. We'll make your life holy heck. You're going to sign that card. And they did sign the card and they joined the union, even if they didn't want to. And then he went further and he said, you're not going to, you get, you're in the union, you get a pay raise, 4% or whatever it was, 3 or 4% compound. You don't join the union, you got no raises. He forced a whole bunch of other people into the union. And now you should see the work rules we got in the state government. Oh, goodness, there's a book. You can't, you can't, you can't go to the bathroom on your own without getting 10, 10 approvals. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's no way, you can't run the government with the current structure. It's not possible. It's just, it's a broken system. And the people of the state don't work for the unions. The unions work for the people of the state. We got the power backwards. It's wrong. It's not that anti-union. I'm just common sense and centrist on this issue. We need some balance of power. The balance of power has gone away from the people, and it's gone to the insiders. The government belongs to the people of Illinois. This government, we work for the people of Illinois. We don't, the, the, the government unions, we don't work for them. They work for us. We've got to change this dynamic and change the balance of power. Now, when you read the agenda, and this is the reason I'm here with you, I need your help. I want to empower you in your county governments to control what happens in your counties. You should decide, your people should decide what gets collectively bargained or not. If you want strong unions and everybody has to be a union in your county, terrific. Keep it. That's wonderful. i got no issue. But you should decide. Your voters should decide. If you want only certain things collectively bargained or certain people to have to join the union or not, you should decide that. Nobody should tell you. you sh your voters should decide. In your schools, do you want your teachers to have to join a union to teach your kids? Terrific. Got no problem with that. But you should decide that. Nobody should tell you what you have to do in your schools. They belong to your people. They belong to your families and your communities. You should decide that. And in your local economy, if you want your businesses in your community to be closed shop and if they got a union, everybody has to pay the union dues, terrific. Keep it. I got no problem with that. But you know what? Um, um, Washington County shouldn't tell Effingham County how they run their economy. Effingham County shouldn't tell Winnebago County how they run their economy. This should be up to you. Count and federal labor law allows counties and municipalities to decide for themselves how they, how they compete in their economy. We can allow that. We can authorize that in Illinois. Then you decide. And I have never advocated Illinois becoming right to work, and I do not advocate Illinois becoming right to work. But we got to pay attention to what's going on around us, guys. Indiana, now Wisconsin. Iowa's been right to work for years. It's one of the reasons they got one of the lowest unemployment rates in America. Missouri has a bill pending in their legislature right now to go right to work. Michigan, Michigan's gone right to work. Tennessee, Texas, a lot of the states that are taking our jobs, they've been right to work for years. They're bleeding our jobs away. we got to compete. We have to compete, because the only way we're going to fix our challenges and pay our pensions and pay for our schools is if we're growing our economy. We lost 48,000 manufacturing jobs out of Illinois the last five years, and Indiana gained 42,000 manufacturing jobs. We cannot keep this up. And as long as a few counties vote for uh, empowerment and employment flexibility, I, as governor, can, can help recruit more manufacturers back to the state, because we got to get Illinois on the list. You know, when, when they're relocation firms, and you're either, as a state, you're either on the list or off the list. When, when a company's looking to relocate, one of the, one of the check boxes is, is it a right to work state or a closed shop state? And for thousands of companies, for thousands of companies in America and from a, a, around the world, they, if, if, uh, they, won't, they won't look at a closed shop state. It's just not, you know, there's, there's plenty of states, te, you know, Texas, et cetera, et cetera, where they can go, where it's, where it's employment flexibility. So we're not on the list. We need to get Illinois on the list. We don't have to have the whole state be right to work, but we need to get on the list. We need a few counties and a few municipalities to, to vote to choose to go that way. Then we're on the list. And I can get more manufacturing firms here. So why, why should we lose the tax revenue? Why should we lose the tax base that we need for our schools and for our social services when a company is looking to relocate from Germany and they want to open a big plant in the Midwest? Why, why should we let it go to Indiana? Why can't we let it look at coming to... Uh, Washington County. Why can't we do that? Why, why should we be blocked from that as an option if they'll only go to a right to work location? We need to be on the list. We need to be able to compete. It's not anti-union. It's pro-competition and pro-tax base. And I believe if we do what I'm recommending, 
Illinois could be a strong union state for decades. Because we don't push, th those communities that want strong unions, keep them, keep them, and they'll be there for, for decades, that's fine. But let Illinois compete. Don't have one community telling another community how they compete. That's all I'm recommending. I think it's common sense, it's centrist, and puts us right in the middle of America. Because we are, we're the core of America, we have the hardest working people, we have the most fertile farms, we should be booming in Illinois. Instead, we're dragging, we're behind all the other states on growth, we're not creating jobs at anywhere near the pace we could or should, and if we don't change that, we're not gonna fix any other problem. So I need your help. I need your help messaging on this agenda. I wanna be a good ally with you and help get this agenda done. Your counties, I'm committed. I will get businesses in your counties. I'll get your tax burden reasonable. I wanna empower your local voters on these issues. Together, we can make Illinois strong again by pushing this, this agenda. That's why I'm here. I want to be your partner. I'm going to be back a lot. As much as you'll let me come, I want to talk with you and I will listen to you. I want to do Q&A now. Let's do three or four questions. Now i got to run to another event. But I want to come back a lot and call me. I'm a, I'm a communication guy. Call me anytime. Talk to our team anytime. If there's something in the agenda you don't like, let us know. If there's something you do like, let us know. But help me with the messaging. Let's get, let's get the power back in your counties and your communities again. And we're going to thrive. We're going to compete. We're going to grow. And we're going to keep our tax burden reasonable. And we're going to get the money back into social services again, rather than into the bribes. Thanks very much. So uh, a few questions. Anybody have a question? Yes, ma'am, on the red. Uh, thank you very much. Would you talk a bit about what you would like to see the task force that you just established on reducing incarceration yes. and how it might um, uh, percolate down to county responsibility. The reason for my question is Champaign County is in the throes <coughs> of planning the building of a new jail. And mm -hmm. so uh, we would like to have a better understanding of your plans. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the honest answer is, I don't know. It's early in the process. We would try to assemble a very talented team, and I'm very pleased with the folks who are willing to serve on that commission. It's wonderful. You know what I would encourage? We, we'll get your name. I'd like to put you in touch with the leaders of the, of the commission. <clears throat> and, and then you guys can have the dialogue. I'm not on the commission. I've, I've got a little bit on my plate. And I've, I've, I've was, you know, we've got, got talented people taking that on. It's one of the most important things we can do is get criminal justice reform in Illinois. Right. And uh, I don't have all the answers on that, uh, but with your help and your communication would be terrific. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. You know, Governor, uh, Jim Mutes is Will County, Illinois. And, you know, Will County is a fast growing county. He has been for the yeah. last 20 yeah. years. Uh, and it, our economy has grown considerably. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all really based on logistics. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, the best location of all, about any county in the country, maybe. Will I, County has an incredible location. We're, we're the largest, for those folks who may not know, we've become the largest inland uh, port yeah. in the country. Yeah. Moved 750,000 containers last year. Much of it now has become an agriculture. We're becoming a big agriculture export uh, uh, spot. So this get, leads me to infrastructure. Yeah. It's certainly important to Will County, and yes. I think it's certainly important to to state of Illinois and I know you've yes. touched on this in the past that you would like to see continual yep. continuing investment in infrastructure can you talk, just talk about yes. infrastructure a little bit great so those of you who couldn't hear he says ask about infrastructure it's a great question really important I'm first and foremost an education the person I want to educate I want the best schools in America and I want to bring back vocational training back into our public high schools yeah. so our young people are trained for the jobs in today's economy but I also want to be very very strong for infrastructure we're the crossroads of America. We're the heart of the transportation network in Illinois. We should be even more, we should be booming in logistics. We're good, but we should be booming. Every logistics company should be in Illinois. Trucking companies should be in Illinois. We've pushed them out with our licensing regulations and our taxes. I want to change that. But I want to make sure we can't be a world-class economy unless we have world-class infrastructure. We have not put enough money into our road system. We have not put enough money into our rail system, our locks, dams, canals. And I want to put tens of billions of dollars into infrastructure. I want to put the biggest infrastructure program in the state of Illinois that's ever been done before. That's my personal goal. Uh, and I don't want to expand the road network. You know, you've got some issues here, you know, Eliana and Pia Tone, there's a whole bunch of stuff everybody's fighting about. I'm not going to fight about that stuff today. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't taken a position on those particular issues. I've not been for a while. i got to sort that one out. But I'm personally committed. Help me get the reform agenda done as part of the reform agenda 
I'm going to have put in a capital bill and an infrastructure plan that's very aggressive and it's, it's huge. It's going to be a big economic boost um, and it's going to be a, a huge uh, job creator. And Will County, especially because of your location, is going to stand to benefit tremendously from it. But infrastructure raises an important issue that I didn't really touch on. Let, let me hit it. Prevailing wage and project labor agreements. Mm -hmm. Okay, now some people are cranky at me for talking about this. Let me, let me be clear. My view is competitive bidding needs to be restored in government in Illinois. And obviously some union leaders get mad. They say, hey, you should have to pay prevailing wage for, and I say, I want local governments, if you want to pay prevailing wage, you, you should decide what you pay and what your competitive bidding is in your, in your economy. I just want competitive bidding. I don't want bid, rig, bid rigging going on. We don't, we don't have competitive bidding in Illinois. I don't think the way we do prevailing wage in these PLAs is right, it's wrong. It costs us 20%, 25% and more in projects that are funded by taxpayers and that's wrong. And if I want to spend tens of billions of dollars on infrastructure, if we have to spend 20% more, 25% more on every project, that's a heck of a lot of fewer projects we can afford to spend to build. And I want more schools, better schools, more roads. And if every one costs 20, 25% more, we're going to get fewer. So we got to take this on. And for those counties you love prevailing wage and you want to pay high wages, you should, you should handle your competitive bidding the way you want to handle your bidding. But you shouldn't be forced, you shouldn't be told how your bidding process goes. Again, the government works for the people of, of, of uh, uh, the Illinois. The government doesn't work for the insiders or certain groups that want to get particular pay on wages. The government, why should taxpayers have to spend more if on the same project if, uh, a private citizen could, could spend 25% less? Why? Because the taxpayers are paying for it. Does it have to cost 20% more? I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that is fundamentally wrong. I don't care what you think about unions or prevail. You control that issue, but you should decide the taxpayers shouldn't be told what has to happen in their competitive bidding process. I believe that very strongly. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming, Governor. Uh, Woodford County, one of our concerns is the court reporter funding. Yes. Uh, due to run out in April yes. or May. Yes. Uh, as you know, this is going to put the, the court system delayed, yep. and we're going to have to uh, furlough court reporters, and they're in short supply now. Yes. Your great question. So this gets to this whole 2015 budget fiasco. So let's talk about this for a minute. This is government process at its worst. You know, so I come into office, my first day in office, I've got a $1.6 billion deficit right now, and a budget that I did not create. And, and I, we immediately went to the legislature and said, okay guys, you guys did a budget that was kind of, you know, not really honest, we gotta fix this. And we're going to fix it not by raising taxes and not by borrowing. We're going to fix it by reallocating money. We have $1.6 billion inside the government. We just need to reallocate it from non-essential over, uh, over to essential. And court reporters are essential. Prison uh, officers are essential. I personally think daycare is essential. Some people disagree, but I, I think we, we should be doing the daycare. I'm, I'm a social services guy. The money's there. But there's disagreement within the legislature on which, which buckets we should move it out of and on what basis. I said, put it on me. I'll reallocate. And then the whole state can scream at me for being unreasonable in the reallocation. I got no problem. I, I get elected to take arrows. I'll take all the arrows. I got no problem. We can fix this. We had, a, we had an agreement pretty well worked out among the staffs early, early on. But then, I don't know, somebody wanted to slow it down or somebody didn't like it or something. And we've been now, what, five, I don't know, five, six weeks? This is not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. This is not rocket science, but we've got you know we've got a legislature that's 177 members, um, and uh, you know you raise an issue and you'll get 292 opinions of 177 people. So so uh, you know this is the process. This is politics. It's sausage being made. I just don't. I think the people of Illinois are not being served. This did not take six weeks. We'll fix it. I promise you, we'll fix it. But we, it's it's. I'm not, you know, I'm one person. I've got a lot of influence, but I'm one person, and the legislature has to approve this process. I could have, we could have fixed it a while ago, and I'm, I'm working with them. We've been close, and we've had various agreements, but you know, some there's, there's a monkey wrench to get thrown in. I have my own theories of what's going on, but it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just taking a while. In the green. Thank you, Montgomery County. We are very concerned in our county. Um, when the state income tax sunset from 5% back down to 3.75, uh -huh. why do we find ourselves as counties 
in a position where we have to justify why we're not getting the 10% share that we got before. Yeah, that's a great but question. I mean, it's not like demand yeah, has true. decreased. <laughs> that's a great question. The answer is because my predecessor and his predecessor spent us into oblivion, spent a lot of the money that would otherwise be coming to you right now. I've got to distill discipline. I've got to call it what it is and cut off. We got to, we got to live within our means. If you'll help me get the reforms done, I'll have the resources. I won't even have to cut the LGBF like we're talking about. But we need to get the structural reform. Everybody wants to talk about tax hikes. Everybody wants to talk about more revenue. We won't fix the real core problem unless we change the structure. And I'm, I'm open to talking about anything. I've already said I'm open to considering uh, uh, broadening the sales, modernizing, modernizing our sales tax. I'm open to a lot of things. But what we've got to do is change on the structure. And you know what? You're not at fault for the, the problem. It's not your fault. And you're, you're justifiably cranky for saying, hey, you're cutting off a bunch of the money. I didn't create the problem. You're correct. But I didn't create the problem either. And frankly, there's a lot of the guys who correct it. One of the guys who correct it, put the problem in is in prison, and the other guy just got kicked out of office. We're trying to co correct a problem the guy created over years. That's everybody's hurting as a result. And I apologize for that. But we're going to have discipline, and with, if you help me get the structural reforms done, we'll, you will be very happy, and you will have a more than balance. You'll have a budget surplus. Thanks very much, everybody. I got to run. Okay.